One of the most important moments in my career as a guitarist was meeting a man called Irvin Samaji. And uh, Irvin is uh, rightly regarded as uh, one of the founding fathers of this modern golden age of uh, steel string guitar luthery. I met Irvin Samaji in 2009 at the sadly defunct Montreal Guitar Show. And um, I'd flown out there a couple of weeks beforehand. I'd managed to injure myself um, looking for a truss rod key in a toolbox and instead I found a razor blade I cut myself really quite deeply uh, on this fingertip uh, and it was starting to heal and I thought you know the first thing I'm going to do when I get to, uh, to the Montreal Guitar Show is uh, as, so as soon as this finger's okay I'm going to play a Samaji guitar for the first time and so I, uh, I went around the exhibition room and I saw instruments from legendary builders uh, Michael Greenfield, uh, Michihiro Matsuda you know, guys whose work I'd admired uh, online for years now. So I promised myself I'd go and play uh, a Samoji guitar. I walk up to the Samoji table and they're all there. There's a line of these things and there's one in a glass case as well and there's this man mountain standing uh, behind them. And that was my first meeting with Jason Costell who at the time was a, uh, an apprentice with Irvin Samaji out in Oakland, California, in the, in the workshop there. So I asked if, uh, if I could try one of these guitars, and Jason sort of looked at me, appraised me up and down like this, and said, okay, okay. So I sit down, and he, he put this piece of uh, chamois leather on me, handed me the instrument, and, and I played my first notes on a Samaji guitar. And like... I think just about everybody who plays Samaji for the first time, you know, it's, it's a life-changing experience. Later that day, I met Irvin for the first time. Um, we got to talking, and uh, he told me that he was launching his uh, his books that night at a, at a private event in, uh, in Montreal. And he said, look, um, why don't you come? Come and, uh, and check it out. So, I was, you know, I was looking forward to that, and I was just playing quietly to myself in the corner and one of the uh, members of staff from the festival came up to Irvin and asked uh, Mr. Samoji, this guitar in the case uh, you want it on stage for the, uh, for the book launch tonight, don't you? And he said, yeah, yes, please. And uh, she said, is anybody going to play it? And he said, yes, he is. Um... Which was quite <laughs> quite a moment. Luckily, uh, that was only about half an hour before uh, we actually started, so I didn't really have time uh, for the magnitude of what I was about to do to kick in. Um, that was the very first modified Dreadnought guitar. It was uh, made for Daniel Hecht in, I believe, 1979. It had been rebuilt. Uh, Hecht himself had added all sorts of extraordinary um, hardware to it, uh, a system of pedal-powered capos uh, and all this sort of stuff, which had uh, subsequently been removed, and the guitar had been restored. Um, so that was my first experience of the first modified Dreadnought, and that left um, quite an impression on me, as, as you'd expect. From that point on, I had a, a modified Dreadnought-shaped hole in my heart, and uh, and I knew that at some point I had to um, steal one, or perhaps buy one, or have one made for me. Um, but I knew it was the, the guitar that was going to change the whole way that I approached the instrument. My friendship with Irvin Samaji continues to this day, and he is uh, one of my favourite human beings, someone I really hold dear. Um, in 2010, he invited me back to Montreal to demonstrate his latest creation, the Andamento uh, 2, the second Andamento uh, guitar that he had made. This was in maple, uh, with a German spruce top, and it was covered in the most extraordinary uh, mosaic work. So that summer, Jason Kostel was back with Irvin Samoji, and he had with him the very first Kostel guitar that he'd made after his apprenticeship. This was number 31. And it's an apprentice instrument. It's, it looks kind of plain, but the, the lines are elegant and, and beautiful. And the voice of this instrument is unlike anything I've heard before. It has elements of everything that I love in a steel string guitar. It has uh, the steel 
of uh, of Stefan Sobel and the uh, um, the fat trebles that you'd find in a Greenfield guitar, along with the exceptional uh, stunt bass <laughs> of a Samoji, and I was absolutely hooked. I've said it before in interviews, but it felt like I'd come home. And um, the following day, Jason and I had breakfast together, and I said, look, um, I need you to make me a guitar. And this is that guitar. It's, uh, it's number 32, a modified Dreadnought by Jason Castle. It's, uh, it's been an incredible friend, and uh, I absolutely love it. It's made from the tree on the back and sides you will see this extraordinary quilted mahogany. Um, the tree is the rarest and uh, most sought after uh, tone wood for guitars in the world really. Um, I've always loved mahogany. It was uh, my, my first proper steel string guitar in fact was a Martin D15 which is, which is all mahogany and I've loved the fundamental character of the bass response that you get from a mahogany guitar. Um, so I knew that when I commissioned a, an instrument from Jason, we'd be looking at mahogany. However, we've both had this um, go hard or go home uh, kind of attitude, and we just thought, let's make it from the tree. The inner sides are ebony. Um, Jason had been uh, bending a second set of sides for this guitar, obviously with a a Samoji style instrument you have two sides laminated together and he'd managed to, uh, I can't remember if he'd snapped or, or scorched the original quilted mahogany um, that he was going to use and he'd had an idea um, he remembered seeing a, a guitar by Michihiro Matsuda which had ebony on the inside and he thought that would be a, a great look against the tree. You know, we already had an ebony bridge and, and fingerboard, and so that would be a, a beautiful, um, you know, continuing the theme. So he, obviously, being a man of integrity, he called Michi and he said, look, I'd like to do that thing that you did with the ebony sides uh, on this guitar that I'm making. And, and Michi paused for a moment and said, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never done that. The intention behind 32 was for me to have one instrument to record and uh, perform and compose on and that's exactly what happened and it led directly to uh, the completion of a solo guitar project that was to become my debut album Vetiver. Mm -hmm. 